Yep. You can hear yourself? Yep. Good. Hello and welcome Hello. to the seventh episode of the Guitar Geekorama podcast. Am I right? Seventh? Seven version yes. three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Had a few technical issues uh the last month. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we've been we've been off air for a little while, but um <laughs> mainly because we've run a whole episode and then it's gone wrong in one way or another. I'm really out of focus or <sighs> the memory card has run out on the camera. Anyway, yeah. This is the one, right? Third's the channel. Right, yeah. Let's let's triple check. I see the red dot. It looks like it's in focus now. Is our audio recording? Audio is recording. Yeah, we're all good. Wicked. Okay, good. We're all set up. So, Alrighty. Dave, I see a new guitar. Yes. What's this? What's this? Uh, this is blue. This is beauty. my new Chapman ML3 traditional. Oh. Um, this is in the middle of a setup, so please don't judge it. I haven't finished it yet. Um, yeah, really nice. I picked this up for just over £200 on eBay. Um, and I'm really pleased with it. I think that, um, considering they're a mid-priced instrument, that the quality control that goes into them is just really good. Um, straight away, I like it for the, uh, what are they, medium jumbo frets or yeah, jumbo so, frets? Yeah. Uh, it's got a bit of a C-shaped neck, but I could get used to it. It's not not offensive. Um, yeah, yeah, because this is the traditional. The neck's a bit chunky, and it would be on the ML3 modern, right? Which is more of a kind of an Ibanez type neck. But it's uh, nice and resonant. It's it's uh, mm. it's got a good uh, good volume to it, and it's just a it's not chambered or anything, is it? No, no, uh, it's an ash body. It's got um it's got those brass saddles on it, which really make a difference, I think. Right. Um. And just out of the factory, the the fret ends are all nicely uh, rolled off. the The fretboard edges are nicely rolled off as well. Sure. It plays. It plays really. I mean, nicely. I know, I know, you've picked it up used, but it mm. it looks um it looks fairly immaculate. immaculate. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't yeah. look like it's uh, been used in anger. No, and the only modifications I've made to it, even though I'd planned a couple, it was just so good. I was just like, there's no need. Like I was going to make it string through, but. It's string through. Mm -hmm. So all I did was switch the control plate around just because I prefer the control, uh, the volume at the front rather than mm -hmm. the select switch on the telly. What, what are you going to do with the, uh, this is so irrelevant to mm. the guitar, but uh, strap blocks. Do you like the recessed ones or I are do. you off of them? I do prefer the recessed ones. Are you going to put them in? Uh, I don't know if I'll, because they're, you know, they're yeah, not insubstantial are. for a right. tiny piece of metal, are they? What are they, like 20 quid or something yeah. for a set? Yeah. Um, yeah. These work fine. Yeah. I mean, yeah, maybe one day. Do you, do you, the, the main reason why I like them is because most of the time I play and I don't have a strap. Yeah. On you yeah. know I'll sit on the sofa or something like that, and I, I just aesthetically it's a bit more pleasing, isn't it? Mm. Than, you know, yeah. Anyway, yeah. No, the main reason I like them is because you can stand the guitar up easier because it's not pivoting on that little piece of metal. Also true. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I've got a couple down there without them, and it's yeah, so two hundred quid on eBay. That's um, that's a result, isn't it? I think. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think complete bargain. But I think it'd be a bargain if I paid new price for it which is about sorry what 350 or something think. like that yeah um yeah fantastic and these are made in what indonesia no korea yeah i think okay. the, the current made. ones are made in indonesia um uh -huh. but yeah I, yeah and these are often. authentic grover licensed no grover machine heads mm. right yeah so that's, that's good quality there yeah i mean it's all good and they, it's they a string string through body yeah nice um profile there on the neck joint as well so mm -hmm. it's a nice guitar very nice is, guitar yeah. well done mr chapman um now exactly um oh and we the were on the body is really nice as well yeah it yeah. is it's got the belly cut and the um yeah the, the, the well, it's got the, the oh it's all the way around isn't it it's actually yeah carved it's yeah. carved it's like a it's like a les paul yeah, yeah very nice very nice now what one of the things that we've talked about and probably mm -hmm. this is for the next episode episode eight version one i'm not doing another take of version <laughs> one <laughs> um is um we're going to compare different uh guitars yes uh semi-acoustic semi-carved mm. whatever then we could probably use this as uh because we've got well, let me see we've got um this you've got a two types of no you've got one semi-acoustic telecaster right yeah it was a semi-semi it's only the top half is right got an f hole and then you've got uh an ibanez which small is bodied ibanez semi yeah uh -huh. and then i've got a large bodied 335 three, three, ish yeah ibanez yeah mm. and a super large jazz box yeah. ibanez as well now i was playing my ibanez um semi this week 
I gave guitar lessons at work because like it was a new initiative for people um, to like teach something in their lunch hour to other people that want to learn it. Sounds That's good. Quite a nice idea. So uh-huh. I had uh, four people come along, wanted to learn guitar. So I took a couple of my guitars along, and one of them was the Ibanez. And as I was playing it, um, I was thinking about what you told me previously because you said you gigged it and you really like it for gigging, right? Yeah, I, I've had a, I've had a, 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 yeah, come to a bit late in the game because we talked about this before. Basically, this is horrible to say, and it's very bitchy. Oasis ruined semi-acoustic guitars for me. True story. Yeah, yeah. coming yeah. up in the nineties. Same for you, really, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, hundred percent. Because it was totally, it was associated with that brand and that thing and the big, you know. That, what was that god awful three th- no casino that he had the the, the union, union jack, jack yeah. put on it i mean all right w- it was a thing but anyway if you weren't into that you weren't into it mm. recently though um i got the ibanez first i got the big jazz box just because yep. I, I just love that and that's um round wounds and you know it's um it's a real jazz guitar yeah. obviously you wouldn't be able to take that and do a rock gig with it mm, no. but i took a punt um got the three three five ish the ibanez, ibanez yep. yeah that one um i gigged with it and straight away i just found that i was getting that sweet spot harmonics harmonic overtones just mm. hitting chords and hearing every note in the chord and things like that and the only thing and nothing else had changed in the rig very simple amp uh 12 inch speaker um it w- it's the semi-acoustic it's that it's that resonant body well the thing i noticed the other day um, mm. which made me think about that is that as you play it, the resonance against your own body, yeah, is is not. It it's something quite substantial, and there's something I noticed between as I was swapping between the tar- guitars quickly, mm. is that when you've got it pressed against yourself and you're playing, you can feel it in you as well, and I think it gives a really nice bit of feedback. Yep. I mean, maybe when you're playing, you know, super loud on stage, it's not as no. Uh, I, th- obvious, I think that that's a really big yeah. big part of it. I think also because you're getting that like haptic feedback mm. is a lot more pronounced. Is that the right? That's the right word. Yeah, yeah, haptic, yeah. yeah. Um, then your attack changes as well. Yeah. And your your awareness of how hard the string is moving changes. Mm. Yeah. Definitely. Or is this another one of those nonsense superstitions that guitar players are well known for propagating? I don't know. But don't know. Uh, well, that don't... was the main subject of today's podcast, was <laughs> it not? <laughs> Superstitions. Superstition. Yes. Yeah, so I bought another new guitar. Oh, did in you? In the break. Yeah. It's this one over here. Do you want to grab it? It's the um, the Ibanez. So um, Dave buys guitars, so you don't have to. <laughs> yeah. So this is a Ibanez RGR, and it's um, kind of a reissue of a '90s model. Metal. It's and a bit metal, isn't it? Not, not well, really. Yeah. yeah, I guess it is a bit. <laughs> but um, there's a couple of things I like about it. Um, number one is that it's an RG without a scratch plate. Um, just think they look nicer. Reverse headstock. The reverse headstock. Just like the um, the Chapman. The Chapman, right? Yeah, you might have this noticed is your thing this at the moment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, also, uh, the difference with this being that it's got a maple neck as well, which my other Ibanez RG hasn't. Um, also, I don't. I've always fancied a gem, but I don't really go in for the the kind of artist model series because I, I don't want to be compared to that artist. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? When you play, always oh, playing the gem is going to try and sound like Steve Vai. Uh huh. I don't have a hope of sounding like Steve Vai. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas this, nobody can really pin an artist to it. It's just kind of like 80s. And I could definitely sound a bit 80s. Sure. <laughs> so um, I mean, it's got that. Is this, is this a wizard profile? Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, that's super, super easy. Yeah. And um, aside from the lovely red dots. Mm, I'm not so keen on those. Yeah. It's my least favorite bit about it. But uh, okay. um, maple fingerboard. Right? Yes. And this is what we're going to talk about today is... I honestly believe that a maple fingerboard is better than a rosewood fingerboard. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and the reason I say such things, mm-hmm. um, I believe that there's a f- different feeling on the fretboard as mm. you uh, play vibrato or a mm-hmm. bend. I feel there's more attack. There's mm-hmm. a, a bit of attack that comes from the fretboard when you, you really dig in. Right. So traditionally, the mm-hmm. take is that rosewood is a softer wood um, mm-hmm. and you will get m- more top end and more spank back off the strings on a maple fingerboard as opposed to a rosewood yeah. fingerboard. Now, now your view is that maybe I like them just because they look way cooler. And they do look well, way cooler. Well, I, 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 I know that I like, I prefer maple fingerboards, definitely. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, but to be honest, it depends on the guitar, right? Now, I do prefer yeah. maple fingerboards generally, but I think it's purely aesthetic. And I would say that whatever you get in terms of a little bit of treble or a little bit more feedback from the strings, uh -huh. it, it, it's it's negligible and it's something you can just get off, off an amp anyway and just compensate for if it exists at all. Yeah. Feel-wise, yeah. I just don't know because I think a lot of it possibly has to do with the finish like is it oiled rosewood mm. is it old rosewood which is hardened over time yeah yeah is it brand new maple and not oil do you know what i mean like i know what you're saying yeah 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 it's interesting because this past week as well um there was a discussion on uh the guitar nerds podcast uh -huh. am i allowed to talk about that of course you are yeah. yeah and they were talking about the new um there's a new squire bullet telecaster that's uh -huh. come out yeah fsr and it's in a lovely um seafoam green uh -huh. um like this kind of color yeah yeah yeah. and it looks really nice and they were talking about what kind of modifications they'd do to it uh -huh. and i was kind of playing along with the game and i did a couple of photoshop mock-ups uh -huh. and the one i really liked that i did was a um uh, a relic version of it now I don't always go in for the relic thing, mm -hmm. but um, for some reason, the relic in with the darkened wood underneath the light colored mm -hmm. um, finish on it and the rosewood fretboard just seems to look really cool. Mm -hmm. So maybe I might come around to one and I've got, let me show you this image. Mm -hmm. I'll put this up on screen. Yeah, man, that's my jam. That's the kind it of looks thing. looks wicked, right? Yeah, yeah. Pick up one of those, mm -hmm. 115 pound, brand new. Mm -hmm. Do a little bit of work on it. Mm. I think that's pretty cool, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm into the... Um, the kind of a limited edition Squire bullets. Well, well you know that I've I've got a well you've you've worked on a Squire um, bullet strap that I've yeah. had and I've I've basically Hendrix it Hendrix, Hendrix, Hendrix did, did Hendricized I've Hendricized it that's right <laughs> so yeah. again reverse headstock maple uh -huh. fingerboard um, and it and I enjoyed relicking it I didn't do such a great job on yeah. it but I just took sandpaper to it and battered it around had the kids drag it up and down the garden a little bit yeah that kind <laughs> yeah, of stuff yeah. you know. Um, yeah. And yeah, it's lovely. It feels like a it feels like a warning guitar. Yeah. yeah. So I might I might have a punt at making this. Why not? Just you know, yeah. maybe challenge the uh, guitar nerds to a a, a, a relic off. A, mm, like a what's the other word I'm looking for? Like um, customization off. Okay. Because um, Jay from Guitar Nerd said that he wanted one that looked like this. Uh, hang on. With the paisley. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's um, cool. I'm not and sure if I did saddles. Is that brass saddles? No, that's well? brass saddles. Right. That was his recommendation well, as well. The, yeah. That goes with the uh, paisley. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm with him. Yeah. But personally, I prefer the the relic one. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Maybe yeah. that's how old is he though? Um, I think he's about thirty. So maybe oh, he's right, just we're older. Yeah. Like when you when you start it. to feel relic, you want your guitars <laughs> to sort of move <laughs> with you. When we're a bit worn in and battered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so. That was a little aside, but mm. um, yeah, so maple fretboards. We're going to do a test today. We're going to blindfold me and see if I can put my money where my mouth is. Actually, mm -hmm. there's no money involved, but no. put my mouth where my mouth is mm -hmm. and see if I can tell the difference between my two Ibanez, one of which has a rosewood board, one of which mm -hmm. has a maple board, but other than that, they should feel pretty, mm -hmm. pretty much the same. And I've got two guitars, which um, I've built as well. Um, so um, two Eldritch guitars. Yeah, yeah. One of which has a maple board. One of which has a um, ebony board. Mm -hmm. So I can see if I can tell the difference between those okay. two as well. Okay. And what kind of pick are you going to use? Ah, <laughs> well, this brings us on to another point of topic today. Um, Mark Thompson so uh, kindly uh, did a trade with me for some Sir pickups, and into the deal he threw in a Hawk pick. Hawk. Handmade guitar pick. The secret of perfect tone at your fingertips. I'll have some of that. I want. I want the secret of perfect tone. Yeah. Uh, thanks for choosing your hawk pick. Here are a few tips to prolong the life of your pick. Probably don't put them in your pocket, right? Yeah, don't uh, drop them always inside. Always clean an and store your hawk pick in a safe place. Don't keep it in your trouser pocket. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll try. <laughs> what, I don't think I can change yeah. the habit of a lifetime. No, it's always anyway, so what's the deal with these? What's What's uh, the nothing. difference between a handmade pick and a uh, Oh well, we're about to find out, aren't we? So no, it does. It feels pretty chunky. It's like jazz size. I yeah, like that. I and think this the texture is a, a little bit different. This is a medium. Yeah. Right. I, I, Maybe we need a pick show. Should we do a pick show where we talk about <laughs> different picks? <laughs> Why not? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, right. Okay. I need a blindfold. Let me go and okay. source a blindfold. 
All right, so I think we'll we'll start with the Ibanez's. Uh, so obviously I've got to keep it keep it secret. I'll show it to the camera and then I'll hand it to Dave in such a way that he hopefully won't be able to feel which one it is. He's got one of his girlfriend's socks as a blindfold. <laughs> yeah, no expense spared on the Guitar Geek Arama podcast. No expense spared. Nothing prepared. <coughs> one, two. Headphones back on. Hello. Okay, you good? Yes. Right, so now I'm going to... gonna. move away or something? Um... Actually, where you are is just fine. Just long. Let me just get this laptop out of your way a little bit, and I think you'll be fine. Um, I'm going to put the uh, pick in your hand. There you go. All right. So you've got your hawk pick there. Which way okay. Around, Other way. Oh. Come on. You can feel the pointy bit. There oh, we I go. meant the picture. All oh, right. There <laughs> we go. <laughs> All right. Here we go. So I'm going to grab the two Ibanez and I'm going to hand you one. Are you ready? Yes. All right. Okay, here we go. Number one. Got the suspense. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. Hang on. Here we go. There we go. No, playing guitar blindfold is not the way. Okay, next. So number two. Um, okay, I'm going to say this one is the maple one. As far as my initial thing. Do you want to do the other two blindfold ones first? Yeah, while I'm in position. Okay, so he said this one was the maple one. You better not be cheating me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try not to touch the body on this one because the body shapes are different. Okay, here we go. Number one. Oh, this is trickier. Okay, next. And number two. I'm trying to slam it into his hands so he can't tell uh, how heavy it is. <laughs> so I've just given it away. Well, you don't know whether that was heavy or light. Think about it. This one is a much closer. Um. <coughs> Now both of these have exactly the same necks on them apart from the fingerboards. Mm -hmm. uh, they've been cut in exactly the same way on a CNC machine by Fast Guitars. Um, little plug there for Kevin. Um, and when did the mic enough? Where's the mic? There's yeah, the both mic. both of those um, have got uh, exactly the same necks, but one has a maple board, one has an ebony board. Both of them were cut on a CNC machine, so they're exactly the same, done by Fast Guitars. Um, and I'm going to say, because it's a lot closer with ebony and uh, maple, they both feel quite hard and they're both quite uh, non-porous in, in the woods, very close-grained. I'm going to say the first one was maple. That's my guess. Unblindfold yourself. Uh, you were, in Hi. fact, correct on both counts. Yes. It is not a myth. You can tell the difference. Maybe. Maybe. 
maybe. Maybe. But we, the def- the second one was definitely but, more and difficult. And to be honest, you've had three shots at this test. Yeah, I know. But <laughs> yeah, like this is the first time we've recorded this and we have had three shots. But every time we've got it right, right? Uh, whoa, what was that? That was a mandolin. Sorry, Chris. Oh, wow. No, not a mandolin. A um, bazooki. Okay. A bazooki in the background, just hopefully not completely smashed up. Um, no, the first time, I think there was a little flub, wasn't there? No, I don't even know what You was. get it right the first time? Yeah, I think I did. There's video evidence, are you sure? No, there's not. That's the problem. Ah, <laughs> you <won't find laughs> out. Okay, well, anyway. Okay, so why? How? How could you tell? Okay, so I think the feel on the bends is is different. Right. You can feel it being a little bit porous on the um, on the rosewood, and this is not just like a trick to know how. So I can tell how's how's the look with the headband going on. Is that something I should deal with? It definitely suits the Ibanez guitars. Right, I don't we'll know go with it thing. for a minute. Yeah. Um, yeah. So y- it's not just a trick, so I can tell which is which, and I'm just telling you my secrets. It, mm-hmm. it feels different. It mm-hmm. feels a lot smoother on the maple board. Mm. Now it might be that, like you say, they're lacquered. Um, mm-hmm. You know, maple necks are generally lacquered. However, my um, the ones I built are not. They're oiled. They got just right. a, just one coat of oil over them to protect now, them. No, I'm not. I'm not trying to yeah. be a negative Nancy here. Uh huh. Um, like I think it's important the way that the that, that it feels is yep. really really important. Sitting here listening to you play, I would say there's there's it's negligible whether it's brighter or not. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds slightly brighter. Yeah, to me. but the feel, I would agree. Like, yeah, you're going to yeah. get a different sound yeah. there for sure. Um, yeah. Now, let me ask you this question. Mm. So, if that's negligible, mm. and it's just looks, that's the main thing. Are mm. the looks of an instrument negligible? Should you not care what a guitar looks like? Hmm. I'll say this. Okay. I have noticed a trend. Um, possibly this is confirmation bias, mm-hmm. but actually, the more technically proficient guitar players get, the more the the uglier and more non-traditional their guitars get. Have you noticed okay. that? Like Alan Holdsworth, right? Yeah, and that's, yeah, that's, that's the first guy who stream who springs to mind. Yeah, is that you know Alan Holdsworth is always was bless him uh, yeah. was. Um, you know the guitar player's guitar player, yeah, right? Fantastic. Yeah, just unbelievable. I don't even to... understand like twenty percent of what he does. Right, yeah. right. Uh, most people don't. He had his own language. You know, yeah, like yeah. the whole way that he codified the instrument was 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 unique to him, yeah. I believe. Um, however, um, you know, when you look at what he did for the actual guitars, it's just cricket bats, aren't they? Well, yeah. Now, I love a headless guitar. Don't get me yeah, wrong, because it's very functional and that they don't. Go it's like a headless change. Telecaster. His model, right? That's essentially yeah. yeah yeah the one that he but i mean the one that he's probably mostly associated with is the the steinberger cricket bat guitar yeah I mean, that's true you yeah, know yeah. all through the 80s yeah. and early 90s i think that was pretty much what he was playing then he switched to the carvings yeah yeah you know yeah. um yep yep so and i think you're right i think there's like the midpoint where guitarists get rich enough they can afford all the nice woods and things like that and then they mm-hmm. go for the you know the prs mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. kind of wood library type Mm. guitars um, I'm thinking as well yeah. of um, uh, Jody Fisher do you know that guy no he's up on YouTube he's he's um, he's a jazz cat uh-huh. and he tends to play those Klein guitars you seen them yeah Yeah. and they've got the massive like ergonomic body shape yeah, yeah. again headless but I mean oh god man they look offensive yeah um, but again it's just doesn't matter what matters is what it, what it sounds like you well, see so far the pattern i'm seeing is that jazz guys play ugly guitars <laughs> 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 all right yeah, yeah. No, you could be right you could uh, be however right. let me say this mm. um uh steve i that we were talking about earlier mm. um when he got his deal with ibanez he specified that he wanted a you know bass basswood basswood body now um most people would say oh you're surely going to go for you know mahogany or ash with a nice bit of curly maple on the top if you're getting an artist still you know something really pretty looking but he was yeah. like no nah. mm. just you know he liked the resonance of it so well we've got eddie van halen to thank for this because you know you know eddie um aside from anything he was a builder and a tinkerer yeah for sure he was he, you know he's probably still doing oh it he now, still is yeah him. i'm sure i'm sure he is so you know this whole thing i think 
I think Steve Fight definitely took that on board. Oh, yeah. And I think he was a tinkerer and is probably still a tinkerer. I mean, definitely, you see him talk about studio equipment. It's frightening. Yeah. His knowledge of, of production is frightening. He's he's an amazing all-round musician. Yeah. And, you know, that's the Zappa influence as well, isn't it? Yeah. Of course. Um, and Frank Zappa was, was absolutely, you know, a pioneer in terms of the way, you know, like bringing, uh, you've seen that video where he, uh, Dweezil is describing how he had preamps put in his guitars yeah, way yeah. before anybody else. Yep. Early 70s to bring it up to line level so that he could use studio grade processors. Yeah. Wasn't he the first to get like a 16 track recorder or something as well? Like he doubled I, I everybody so. else's yeah, like, track like inputs. Going way back to like 67, 68, Hot Rats. Uh, he, he was one of the first ones yeah. to do like 12... Uh, 12 channel recording and, yeah. and overdub his own yeah, plan. Yeah. I think it's him and Ian Underwood mostly on, on Hot Rats, for example. Yeah, it yeah. was a rumour as well that he introduced Hendrix to the wah pedal. Is that Why, possibly. Yeah, I think Why that's not? true. Yeah, anyway, so mm -hmm. like we're saying that innovators, um, but not necessarily pretty guitar players. Right. Well, <laughs> I don't know what our point is here. Well, okay, because yeah. what, what we're getting to yeah. is, is the way a guitar looks uh, important. important. Yeah. Now, I would say yes. And mm -hmm. the reason for that is, if you see a guitar and you want to go and touch it, you want to go and play it, mm -hmm. it's going to get you to practice. Certainly, when you're starting out mm -hmm. or you're kind of in mm -hmm. where I am, where you kind of you can play a bit, mm -hmm. but you really need to get more practice mm -hmm. in. Then having something that looks nice and is mm -hmm. appealing to you and feels mm -hmm. nice mm -hmm. is is going to improve your playing, you know, so mm -hmm. much just because mm -hmm. you want to be in mm -hmm. touch with that guitar. Mm -hmm. If you're playing an old rat of an acoustic or something, you're mm -hmm. just not going to care. You're not going to mm -hmm. want to touch it. I, w I wouldn't argue with any of that. Um, and what I would say as well is that tastes change over time. Yeah, for sure. And we, we have kind of touched on this before. Like, um, if you're going to do a jazz gig, it would be kind of weird to turn up with a gem. Yeah, it you would. Know? Yep. Um, it's not. I mean, honestly, I'm fairly certain you could get really decent passable jazz tones out of an Ibanez gem. Probably. You know, on the neck pick up, roll off yeah. some of the tone. Yeah. I'm sure you could do it. Yeah. But aesthetically, people would be like, what the, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. I mean, there is that. And uh, as well, I mean, uh, when you look, at, say, if we talk about rock players, the way they look is just as important as the way they sound. Yeah. You know? So then the way the guitar looks is really important. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. Anyway, so that's my point. I believe it is po important to an extent where it gets people interested in the instrument. Mm -hmm. Um, and that that's my summary on that. Good end of end, everything. End no, of it's not the end. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it's not. What? No. Okay, then I I say this feeds back into the um the semi acoustic thing, right? Right. Is that the the difference is very much you can feel it you can you can hear it yeah yeah um and how and then coming back to it how stupid you know i can like i as a child well a child as a teenager um i didn't like e epiphones and casinos because i didn't like oasis because yeah. of the way they looked yeah yeah so because of important. the association yeah, yeah. of course yeah because then it would go with bomber jackets and bowl haircuts and, um, n you know, mouthy Liam Gallagher. Now, I think, uh, honestly, if I look back on Oasis, I think they're brilliant. Because, uh, well, no, absolutely. Who, who would who could have been more obnoxious in rock and roll than that? Yeah, they they were legendary. Yeah. You know? And what's more... Imagine the power of that, yeah, that I disliked as a kid, I disliked a guitar because it was so connected yeah. to that brand. So they basically, you know, because those kind of guitars, BB yeah. King, really, yeah, or, or yeah. any of the, yeah, yeah. Any old blues cats, right? That's yeah. really the iconography of it, right? <laughs> uh, Chuck Berry, whatever, yeah? Yep. They, they took over a type of guitar, you know? And yeah, now, I can, now I can appreciate Noel Gallagher as a songwriter and as a rock and roller as in yeah. he knew what the game was yeah 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 for sure, so yeah. there's no there's no apologies for you know it's like oh sorry you, you didn't like my brand shut up you know yeah, what, what, yeah exactly. what's about what i think about it fair enough uh, still wouldn't listen to and them. then you know yeah, I, I, I don't i don't listen to their albums or anything like that but i can see what why they're so iconic yes also then you could probably say that about someone like graham coxon 
Uh, is that his yeah. right? Coxton? Coxton? Coxton. I can't remember. Yeah. yeah. The Blur. Yeah. Yeah. So for him, probably it's Telecasters, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, he, for sure. And, yeah. and again, maybe I'm wrong, but if I think of him, I think very specifically of Rosewood, Fingerboard, Telecasters. I could be wrong. Don't know, to be honest. I know Black Telecaster. I yeah. can't remember what, what fretboard right. they had, but yeah. Right. Definitely, and he's one person that again always stays with the same gear and got a very distinctive sound from mm-hmm. it as well. You know, probably Radiohead in the same sort of ballpark yeah. as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, um, Nirvana as well, very distinctive guitar, yeah. very dis- and yeah. that was driven mainly because he was left-handed and he didn't have a whole lot of choice. Right, is that so? so? I don't know. Yeah, so yeah. you know the the Mustangs or the Jaguars, uh-huh. or whatever he was using, the left-handed. Uh-huh. There wasn't a whole lot of choice out where you could be different. All right. So that kind of drove his guitar sound a little bit. Mm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Huh. So anyway, yeah. Mm. Good. All right. Um, so I'm going to say, yes, there probably is a sound difference uh-huh. to Maple. Yep. But I'm going to say that you can probably adjust that with the amp very easily. I'd say that a new set of strings would even make the difference. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. If you're changing your strings every gig, if you're rich or <laughs> not mad, because it's going to go out of tune. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway. But yeah whatever you know then you're going to get that same kind of bright sort of sound there however the way it feels under your fingers that's really important yeah and And i agree as well the way it looks is important too yeah um because definitely i would uh, if i play a telecaster i want a a maple fingerboard that's Uh just personal preference yeah okay so next week we'll do this test with the solid to fully um, oh yeah, hollow run, run through the range of semi-acoustic yep. and options. I, I'll put that sock on you, lucky you, and oh, wow. you can hear mm-hmm. my bad playing and let me know which you think it is. Okie doke, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. all right, cool. Let's do that. Let's do that. All good. right, we, we've so uh, we've had a um, a challenge come through, haven't we? We have, yeah, Chris. Can, now before we move on to anything else, yeah. can we just double check that we've got that audio? Okay. Recording button. okay, good, good. still in focus. Okay, I all right, think so We're good because <laughs> yeah. this is where we've I had checked problems. the auto focus was on about 14 times this morning. So. Right, right, okay. good. Okay, yeah, so uh, Chris, who's another YouTuber, um, and subscriber to our podcast, good work, um, sent us a couple of challenges this week. Number one was that he liked our blind blind tests, um, of the preamps that we did, mm. and we had, um, you know, the helix. Mm-hmm, versus mm-hmm. the valve amp etc yeah, 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 yeah. and um he uses a lot of studio gear and he's got the new bias amp 2 um okay. vst for his um machine mm. and he's um he's got an all valve fender vaporizer which mm. is mic'd up and recorded mm-hmm. but he's also amp matched it using mm-hmm. the bias amp 2 software mm-hmm. and he sent us two web files to see if we can so tell the vaporizer the difference. is that one channel um, yeah, you can just drive really hard, right? Yeah, that's it. it yeah, right. okay. kind of fifties like looking. Okay, so he, cool. uh, he's he's done that, I suppose, to keep it simple, right? So just get a yep. simple amp and then model that amp, and we've got to tell the difference. Yep, I'm anticipating, and maybe this is just arrogance. I'm anticipating it's going to be easy. But, okay, but I have been proved wrong with these a lot of these modeling um, amps recently, so probably shut my mouth. Okay. Now, so how's this going to work? We we're going to listen. to I've it. got two WAV files somewhere here, and we're going to listen to it. I'm going to plug the headphones into the laptop, and I'll I'll put this on a separate recording. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're gonna I'm gonna have a listen. Was it this laptop I used last week? Because I can't find the files. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm here. This is where the uh, technical snafus come into play. All right. So, Chris has sent me two WAV files, just labelled one and two. If you pass me your headphone mm-hmm. out from there, I'll plug it into the laptop. I will also be recording these. Um, I'll be sending the recordings of these direct to the uh, the video out so everybody else can hear them at the same time. Right. Okay. This is number one. <laughs> Okay, 
number two. Mm-hmm. You want number one again? No. I do. Do yeah. Can I? Yeah, go for it. That's fine. Okay. Now, I feel like there's a slight disadvantage here. As in, uh, one has a definite reverb or something on it. There's a little bit of... Yeah, something I there. agree. There's something of a space, and that might be the fact that he's got the the reverb from the room where he's mic'd be. it. Um, but that should also be modelled, right? Oh no! Now you're getting into some interesting territory. I don't know enough about it. Are you, when okay, this is so. Just yeah. listening to those two, I would say that one is the amp yeah because it feels lively mm-hmm. and there's some space yeah and two is the modeling because it feels boxy and and there's no no ambience to it yeah now both tone wise both are, are fine you know just a little crunchy rock sound yeah. whatever i think you could add reverb and get that big you know get a nice big kind of ac dc kind yeah. of sound or something like that yeah no problem right but just listening to it there, that would be my cause. Yeah. One is the real one, real, and two is the yep. modeling. I would agree. I, I think it's really close, though. Hmm. I think that um, if you just listened to it and said, is that a real amp or modeling, and yeah. just didn't have a comparison, I wouldn't be able to tell you. Yeah, and I, what I would say is if you if you if even if you added a little bit of ambience to both yeah, of yeah. those, you wouldn't be able to tell no, them No, not at all. Yeah. So uh, do you want to know the answer? Yeah. So do I. So, Chris... <laughs> Please let us know the answer. Oh, that's not fair. Yeah, he hasn't told me. (laughs) No, 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 no. You can't do that. Well, I mean, we've got no option. So call him up right now. I want to know. Maybe not. (laughs) What I'll do is um, I'll get the answer before I publish the video and I'll put the answer in the the comments. I feel like I've been shanghaied into that. (laughs) Yeah, right. right. So do I a little bit. Well, you're you're complicit in his uh, his ruse. Yeah, I guess I am. All right, well, I'm still going to stick with that anyway, and then next uh, next week I can be uh, shamed and embarrassed. That's yep, fine. Yeah, fair All enough. Right. So can I. Now, that you said two challenges. That was one. Ah, the other one um, is... I hope, the, I hope the next one has a conclusion. <laughs> well, I think it will. All right. This is the Behringer Ultra Metal. High-quality instruments, Behringer, yeah. Hmm. Now, Chris has said... He challenges us to get a decent metal tone from this. Yeah, I thought it was going to be something good, like how far can you throw it? Oh, I think we'll do that <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, um, Behringer um, have essentially built a brand on um, borrowing designs, shall we say. Uh, okay, and yeah emulating them having them mass produced in china and essentially giving us sort of um cheaper and less well produced versions of iconic items now for some things it works like i've actually got a behringer uh, mixer that i use a little rack mixer it's fine it's not amazing it's not going to win any awards but it's not particularly noisy and it's fine for gigging live i'm not sure if i would record with it or anything like that but it's modeled after um a Mackie, i think mm. yeah um and I, I have a feeling that if it's in china it's after five years patents expire in china did you know this stuff i did not know after this. five right, th- right so in china um, part of the idea of getting this cheap production in China is after five years they get the patent of so anything produced anywhere oh in the yeah. world. Yeah, which is why R and D and all the big brands have to be like five or six years ahead all the time. You see, yeah. um, so what you might get is you know whatever Behringer are making now potentially I don't know for sure, but allegedly and so I've heard it could be a five year old Mackie design with lesser components. But that can't be the same for IP because there's because Gibson's still fighting the whole Chibson thing. 
Gibson was that was that China? Chinese Gibson, yeah. Right. It depends, doesn't it? Because um, okay, maybe IP is different, but okay, did Gibson agree to have their guitars m- manufactured in China? No, that's the difference. Right, Part of the okay. agreement with you, like yes, we'll have our our item mass produced. So this is why. Oh, so we can get cheaper labor by using Chinese labor, but. Part of that deal is that after five years, then this is what I've heard, and and oh. you know, p- please, someone who knows about this properly, you know, I, I'm only really telling anecdotal things that I've, yeah, I've yeah. heard there, and there is a lot of anecdotal evidence because suddenly you'll go like, hey, that looks just like a so and so amp, but it's got cheaper quality components and it's an accessible version of it. Mm. Just yesterday, um, I was playing through a Behringer bass amp, it's a 30 watt thing, perfectly decent very passable oh, it's not going to win awards you're not going to put it against a mark base and play it live probably you know what i would 30 what well okay it but if it was louder yeah yeah, yeah 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 but um you know honestly uh, i know it's a, a bass amp so it's not you're not going to be as fiddly about yeah. the tone or whatever however however i will say this things like this the pedals, the smaller units, are, I'm I'm not sold. I've never had a Behringer pedal that I like. I've never had a Behringer processor that I like. I, do you know what I mean? And and besides which, like maybe like a Behringer speaker is fine, you know. But a Behringer like digital signal processor or something, um, I think it might leave something yeah. to be desired. Well, Possibly. Let's, let's find, out. find out. Okay, so there's a cable, power cable running uh-huh. across here. So, before we plug it in then, or maybe, hold on, I'm not going to get electrocuted. electrocuted oh, who on. knows with okay. a Behringer pedal. Um, so, this is obviously, I'm guessing, this is modelled after a metal zone, a boss metal zone. Is that right? Oh, now we've got no sound. Oh, hold on, hold on. Right, okay. Go on. What's going on? Oh, my God, there it is. You're going to cut that bit out. (laughs) All right. So this uh, Behringer Ultra Metal... UM300. You know, is it Behringer or Behringer? Oh, good question. Don't know. I've always said Behringer. I think the accent should be on the ring. Behringer. Anyway, okay. ringer. Yeah, it's fake, oh, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, so bad. So Behringer are going to sue me. <laughs> right. Um, so it's modeled pro- probably after a metal zone, isn't it? Boss yeah, metal I'd say zone. So, yeah. Ultra metal. Right. Okay. So, Dave, play and. That's clean tone. Going through a. Shall I mic this? No, I think it'll be all right. Because we haven't even got a mic to do it with. Well, I could drop mine down. Go on then. Yeah, let's do it properly. All right, so I'll have to do the talking then, I guess. Um, So, it's going through a a Blackstar HT1, which is a little um, 1-watt all-valve... Uh, practice amp essentially and well known for having a fairly decent tone anyway okay for some reason we picked up some hum now go on keep playing all right so we've got the amp so just do it play a little just from the amp thanks Very nice 80s sounding thing. That's uh, thematic. All right, now I'm going to engage the ultra metal. Are you ready? Yes. All right. Okay, I'm going to disengage the ultra metal and try and get a sound out of it. Hold on. (laughs) So that was with the uh, distortion quite high up. I'm going to keep the level at about... um, about 12 o'clock uh now we've got high low and uh mid frequency i'm going to dial everything to 12 including the sweep selector for the mid range so distortion at 12 high 12 low 12 mid range all at 12 and the level at 12 are you ready before okay play the riff okay here comes the ultra metal and Sounds 
Yeah. Okay, okay. Can you play a little bit of um, leady stuff? Okay, something something very bizarre is happening. We're getting this kind of break up and cut off. All right, let me play with this. So what, what we're basically finding is, um, no, you can't get a good sound out of this. <laughs> End. <laughs> no. Okay, this is a good point, actually. Um, maybe go on eBay, spend 20 pence and get another one to find out. <laughs> All right, <I'll> <laughs> no, um, I, I would say, okay, as a distortion device, it's useless. Um, the, the, the actual, the amount of distortion that you can put in there is, it, it's just way too much any anything up to 12 o'clock doesn't really do too much well it's just you know nondescript anything past that it starts doing that weird cutout what i would say is because of the um frequency sweep and because of the the just obvious like way too much distortion available you could probably get like those kind of synthy sounds out of it yeah, and if it you want like it it does yeah it sounds like a broken big muff or something like that yeah i want to go again all right. See, it's doing. I think that that has to do with the EQ because it's doing that cutout thing, but the distortion is is not even at twelve o'clock. Yeah, it's yeah. more or less twelve o'clock. Holy crap! What right, was that? it just died. Oh, the cables coming out the side. Oh, oh my god! Is that what's causing the breakup? <laughs> what the heck? It's kind of cool. It's alive, man. That is so odd because that's like the tracking it, 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 it is like off. It is an octopus. Yeah, yeah. You know what it reminds me of? Um, It's a Prince song. It's coming to me. It's not Purple Rain. When Doves Cry. The beginning yes. of When Doves Cry. Yeah? Go for it. Oh. <laughs> it's something like that. It's up at the 12th. Yeah. Oh, so there we go. Yeah. There we have yeah. it. Oh, Prince um, obviously used a Behringer Ultra Metal um 300 at the beginning of um, when doves cry in 1982 um he was ahead of his time and he's no longer here to refute that so that's what it's useful for i would be interested uh, i think the answer is no you can't get a good guitar sound out of that but i bet if you plugged a keyboard or a bass into it you could wreak havoc go on oh. Oh, no, I'm actually going to do that. Okay. Okay, now, see, now we're going to get a, a bass from somewhere. Right, there's one. There's one I bought earlier. <laughs> All right, Dave is racking up his um, Warwick rock bass. They still make these. Oh, they're great. They're they are great, actually. This is a very sort of cheap um, Chinese finished version of the um, iconic. Oh, yeah. Killer. All right. So now we're running a uh, rock pace. Now, what what's the EQ settings on that though? Because you got to watch it. Mid. So mid, 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 mid oh. and all the way up. Okay, so play a little bit. Now, obviously, this is still going through the little one watt guitar amp. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I 
soldier. That's yeah. awesome. So the answer is no, not on guitar, but yes, on bass. I would be quite happy with that. I would I would play around with that for a while. Um, that would really annoy the guitar player in the band. If you're the bass player and you're doing that. <laughs> yeah, I'd be writing the same frequencies as the yeah. guitar, wouldn't it? And it's just like you with your, um, you know, 20 quid ultra metal pedal getting a, a, a pretty decent uh, distortion sound yeah. <laughs> against <laughs> his really expensive amp. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wicked. yeah. Right. Um, so I reckon hmm. I'm going to have a play around with this. It might be broken. Mm -hmm. This seems a bit dodge. Oh. Right. Okay. Yeah, so it might be so, the power so what, on that that's causing it. Yeah, because so there's a power on. switch, obviously. What's the um, what's the nature of the challenge? Like, okay, get a good sound out of it. That was it. Yeah. Okay. I think you just wanted to see us fail. All right. Okay. Because I was going <laughs> to say you could always rip the guts out and start messing around with it that way. I don't know. Yeah. That. Well, yeah. that's what I'm going to suggest. That if I can't fix it and make it sound good, then right. I will try it. Have you some seen transistors those, and things? Have you seen those circuit bender guys? No. Oh my god, they're on YouTube. <coughs> you gotta check them out. They take stuff okay. like a speak and spell and uh -huh. um short all the circuit board and all that kind of stuff and just do mad that stuff. Cool. No, it is very, very cool. Check it out. We'll talk about circuit it next benders. week. Circuit benders, I believe, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Nutters. Yeah, you've got to check them out. They kids cuddly toys and stuff and they just like totally mess with them. Yeah. Oh wicked. It is really Love it. good. Okay, yeah. I'll check yeah. that out. Um Yeah, but maybe I'll Go away, have a play with this. Right. And yeah, that that's it really. So next week's episode, um and hopefully now we've got our technical issues sorted, we will be able to uh uh, uh get Yeah, wah -ha -ha. Yeah. Um we'll we'll do the uh, semi acoustic Yeah, uh, challenge. 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 Yeah. All right, nice yeah. one. Okay, Fair that's it. Yeah, I think we're done. All right, thanks to Hawk Pickups performed admirably oh yeah yeah and thanks for those annoying challenges Chris, we, we yeah. still don't know the answers but yeah it's just Chris. The yeah all right cheers keep playing yeah like cheers. subscribe all of that stuff and yeah goodbye bye